Hello Kids Church. A bit crazy that we're at home again. I wonder, how are you going? Mitchell and Kurtz and I have been praying for you. As your home lots and as your homeschooling again, we're praying for you. Well, this term at Kids Church, we are going to look at a book of the Bible called Philippians. And it's a letter. I'm going to read through the first part of the chapter today and talk about it. If you have your own Bible or a mum and dad's Bible, maybe you could borrow it and read along. Just pause this if you need to go find a Bible or get to the right part. Otherwise, you can just listen and that's all good too. Before I start, how about we pray? Dear God, we thank you for your word, the Bible. And pray that as we read it together today, that you would help us. Amen. All right, I'm going to read from Philippians. And as I do, see if you can figure out who wrote the letter and who it's written to. Listen. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear? It's a letter and it's written from Paul and Timothy and to the church in Philippi, the Philippians. God's holy people is just another way of saying the church or God's people in Philippi. Do you know that Paul and Timothy had met the people from Philippi and from that church and they told them about Jesus and now they're writing them a letter to encourage them to keep living for Jesus. Well, listen to the next bit and see if you can hear what Paul does every time he thinks about the Philippians. It's pretty awesome. Listen. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Did you hear what he does every time he thinks of them? He prays for them. How cool is that? Every time he thinks of the church in Philippi, he prays for them. He thanks God for them and he does it with joy because he knows that God is at work in them, making them more like Jesus. How great is that? Did you know that when we think about people, we can pray for them too? We can give thanks to them with joy. Why does Paul pray this way? Let's listen to the next bit. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. You see, Paul knows that the people in Philippi, the church in Philippi, are forgiven, just like he is. That they share in God's grace, God's undeserved kindness of Jesus dying in their place. He loves them as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so he doesn't just give thanks to them for them, he prays for other things too. Or listen. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best, and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Oh, there's a lot in there, right? Okay, I'm going to read it again. At this time, see if you can hear what all praise will abound or grow. Okay, see so if you can hear 
what Paul prays for them will abound or grow. Ready? And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more. Did you hear it? Yes. God prays that their love would abound, would grow more and more. Because people who know God will grow to be like God and God loves amazingly. All right. If they grow in love, what will it look like? Will it mean that all of a sudden everyone in the Church of Philippi is bringing each other flowers and chocolates and hugging each other lots? Because is that what it means? To like grow in love? No. Listen again, because Paul tells them what it's going to look like when they grow in love. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern, discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Growing in love means that they'll know the best way to live, God's way, the way God wants them to live. And that they'll live as the people that they already are. God has already made them pure and blameless through Jesus when he died in their place. Their sins are forgiven. They have God's spirit in them. God is at work in them. So Paul prays that God's work in them will be seen more and more. He calls it the fruit of righteousness. Not like an apple or a pear or a banana, but love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Paul prays that these things will be seen more and more in their lives as God works in them, making them more and more like Jesus. His and even more awesome part, as they do, as their love abounds and they live more and more like Jesus, God will be given the glory and the praise. How good is that? Why? Because it's his work in people. Well, did you know that there are people praying these very things for you? that your love will grow and that you'll be more and more like Jesus. And did you know that you can pray these things for other people now? So we're going to do that now. I want you to think of someone you know who trusts in Jesus. I'm going to pray and you can pray with me and you can think about the person that you know. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for the people we know who trust in Jesus. And we think particularly about... Please help them to grow in love more and more. Please help them to be more and more like Jesus. Amen. All right. I have a challenge for you. You are at home and you have lots of time and you're probably spending way too much time zooming and on screens and all that crazy stuff. So here's something you can do not on screen. Every day this week, I want you to think of someone you know who trusts in Jesus. And I want you to pray for them. Do you reckon you could do that? Think of someone you know who trusts in Jesus and pray for them. You could give thanks for them. You could pray that their love will grow. And you could pray that they'll be more and more like Jesus. And you can know that God will answer those prayers as he is at work in you and in them. All right, Kids Church, thanks for joining me today. Know that we are praying for you this week. And if there's anything in particular you'd like us to pray about, just ask mum or dad or Uma or whoever 
you're at home with to let us know and we will pray that for you as well. But that's it for this week. So bye for now.